Hey everybody. That's about a year's worth of scrap from building this thing. I think it's like 6.30. Humidity is 53%. And it's about 82 or 83 degrees. Absolutely beautiful day. Couldn't have picked a better day to clean this garage up a little bit, which is the primary focus of this video because I really haven't, haven't done anything. I don't know how much of the world's population I'm gonna be able to wow with this video, but I figure if teenagers can achieve multiple millions of views by screaming at video games, I thought I had a fair chance at something. Yesterday, I tried to install some of these switches, broke two heads on the, or uh, screw heads on the circuit breaker, so I just gave up. But I'll be back at it soon enough. I've got three big old sheets of aluminum coming in, and that's going to be used to construct the flight deck floor. Uh, the flight deck floor is going to be the maximum allowable road length of this, or width, or whatever you want to call it, depth, which is going to be 102 inches which is from right there to about right there. So the beams, which are their I-beams, they're eight inches tall and they run about like that. And then they taper up towards the end where they meet the base of this top of this bulkhead 1.0. So they'll taper down and then go straight back to 102 inches. And there's four of them. There's one about right there because this side is unsupported. It's kind of free hanging and attaches to the frames of the fuselage. And then there's two equally divided between the console and another one like this on the other side. And then there's lateral beams. And there's about one right there, and one right there, and one right there. Um, there's a big opening in the flight deck floor for the console. And there's an opening on either side for the control columns that stick up, as well as two openings behind the rudder pedals for whatever reason. I just know they're there. The flight deck, of course, is gonna be the I-beams. And then on top of that is gonna be the flight deck floor, which is thin corrugated aluminum. It goes like that. And then on top of that is going to be a sheet of 16 gauge, relatively thick aluminum. She's gonna be pretty strong. <clears throat> Building back to 102, because as you all know, I'm gonna to have to cut all this, well, not there, I'm sorry, here, building back to 102. <clears throat> have to cut all this in whatever way works best so it can be modular so I can take it apart with simple tools in the field or wherever. I'm gonna cut one at a time and then make the, uh, the mounts that I need, which is probably gonna to equate to a couple of holes with a big heavy duty bar of steel or aluminum that I can just put like maybe cotter pins or something in. I'll use screws on the visible areas, which there won't be many. And then I'll probably cover that up with a sheet of aluminum that I can remove one or two pop rivets or remove with a drill install with a riveter, something like that. Then I'll continue or build this portion of the flight deck floor by itself, which It'll only be, you know, from here to there. So maybe two feet. And then I'll be able to, and it's gonna have its own casters, its own little dolly. So I'll be able to push it off and then push this forward. And if I do find my way to an air show, which of course, you know, 102 being the maximum width, <clears throat> it's gonna take, I'm gonna have to put these on the trailer side by side. So, you know, if my, my towing vehicle, which might be my van, if it can handle it, is here, 
you know, the trailer is going to be here and then the, the aft section of the flight deck will be back here. So you're looking at at least a, probably a, a 24 foot long trailer. Or if I go someplace and just want to take the front half, I can do that as well. All comes down to money. It makes these airplanes fly and it builds them too and transports them. Ah, yes. The star of the show, a clean garage, clean by my standards, kind of takes on a whole other, whole other look and feel. You can actually kind of see it. Now, I know what you all are thinking. I've made this room so I can continue back to bulkhead 4.0. You're probably right. I'm probably going to cave in because there's no sense in having 102 inches on the front of the trailer and then having, you know, 48 inches on the other. So I can easily build the top half of the radio compartment and it won't take a tremendously amount of, long amount of time. Of course, I'm going to have to leave something open so I'll be able to get down there and, you know, work on it because I'm not going to try to slide through a surface like that. You know, I don't, I'm not going to be playing that game. This is really the first good look you've had at the back of this thing. This side is a little bit higher than this side because on that side, I've got that jack under it just to make sure everything is ultra up in the air. But it's level on both sides, fear not. Something I've just realized, I questioned for so long as to how these long, longitudinal canopy frames attach to the fuselage back here. As you can see, the only difference in mine and the real B36 is they used um, threaded fasteners where I've just riveted in there. Who knows, I might, you know, go ahead and do the threaded fasteners once I study this area a little bit more to determine if they used double sides here rather than just this here. I was looking at some earlier pictures that I took of the front of the B-36. You can see these rivet lines. Um, I did not know what was here at the time when I built this. All I knew that there were some frames and or stringers here. I tried to duplicate these rivet lines the best I could looking at what close up imagery I had. And of course, when I first built, started building the actual airframe, I made, the first thing that I did was made, make bulkhead 1.1, which sits right there. And then I knew above bulkhead one was that big three inch area that goes up to there. And I thought that the frames attached directly to the frame. But here's how they actually attach. It's, it's similar to what I just showed you on the aft end. These canopy frames, they continue all the way down here and then thread fasten into these stringers identically to that of how it's found in the aft section. Uh, in order for me to duplicate that, I would have to completely rebuild the front which I'm not going to because, you know, nobody's ever going to know. Um, it's unfortunate. I mean, I got some of these really close, but not close enough. Then again, if you know me by now, I, I tend to say things. When I say I'm going to do something, I do it. And sometimes when I say I'm not going to do it, I end up doing it, which would involve taking all of this off of here, like they do on the real airplane when they take the canopies off, because that's gonna have to be fixed. Maybe I should just shut up and see what happens. But now you know how that works. So 
these frames, they attach to these stringers here and go whoop all the way up and then attach like so. The side frames, or the lateral frames, they attach to, uh, I don't know what kind of a bolt they're called, but it's like a bolt on a thread and it, ha and it has the ability to move. But there's one here, or there's one, no, there's one here, here, and there. So there's three of those. And those big threaded bolt things that nut or bolt down onto these frames, that's what holds the three locations on, that ain't pretty, on the sides. And you know how they do on the front and the back. Anyways, uh, I should have my aluminum in probably two days and then I'm gonna get to laying down that flight deck. I'll see y'all next time.